भगवते वासुदेवय जन्म यथो निवयादेशने ब्रह्म हृदय अदिक वे मुयती यूरय तेजो वरी मदम यथा विनीम यत्रिसर्गो मश ट्रूथ And the primeval cause of all causes, and the primeval cause of all causes, of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. Creation, sustenance, and destruction of manifested universe. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. He is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaj. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaj. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations, as one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen in fire or land seen on water, water seen on fire or land seen on water, only because of him do the material universes, only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested. Appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon Him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental world, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon Him, for He is the absolute truth. Dharma projita kaitrovo tra. Dharma projita kaitrovo tra. Paramo nirmatsaranam sata. Paramo nirmatsaranam sata. Vedyam vastavam atra vastu. Vedyam vastavam atra vastu. Shivadam tapa trayon mulanam. Shivadam tapo trayon mulanam. Shrimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Shrimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Kimba parir Ishwaraha. Kimba parir Ishwaraha. Sadyo hridi avarudyate tra. Kriti bhihis susu bhistakshanat. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam, compiled by the great sage Vyasa Deva in his maturity, is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge, culture of knowledge. the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpaturur galitam falam. Sukamukad amrita dravya samyutam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Mohur aho rasika buvi bhava kaha. O oh, expert and thoughtful men, relish Shrimad Bhagavatam. O oh, expert and thoughtful men, relish Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. The mature fruit of the desire tree of the Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Shri Sukadev Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Shri Sukadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Even though its nectarian juice is already relishable for all. 
including liberated souls. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna Shambatam Swakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Vidyantaksto Padrani Vidu Nuti Suhitsatam To hear about Krishna from the uh, Vedic literatures or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna, who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly hears, who engages in hearing of him. Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Bhagavatam, no, I'm sorry. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhavo Kama loba dayas chaye Chaitya tari nabitam Sitpam satve prasiddhati <clears throat> By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance, and thus material loss and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso, Bhagavat bhakti yogitaha, Bhagavat Tattva Vijnanam Mukta Sangasya Jayate When these impurities are wiped away the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness becomes enlivened by devotional service and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis chidyante sarvasam saya siyante chasyakarmani drista evatmanishwari Thus bhakti yoga Severs the, severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come to the stage and enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram, understanding the supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead. Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 13, Text 55. Vijnanatmani Samyogya Vijnanatmani Samyogya Shetragye Pravilapyatam Pramanyatmanam Adhare Gatam baram ivam bare. Gatam baram ivam bare. <clears throat> Translation by Srila Prabhupada. Dhritarashtra will have to amalgamate his pure identity with intelligence and then merge in the Supreme Being with knowledge of his qualitative oneness as a living entity 
with the Supreme Brahman. <coughs> Being freed from the blocked sky, he will have to rise to the spiritual sky. Purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. The living being, by his desiring to lord it over the material world and declining to cooperate with the Supreme Lord, contacts the sum total of the material world, namely the Mahat Tattva. And from the Mahat Tattva, his false identity with the material world Intelligence, mind, senses is developed. This covers his pure spiritual identity. By the yogic process, when his pure identity is realized in self-realization, one has to revert to the original position by amalgamating the five gross elements and the subtle elements, mind and intelligence, into the Mahat Tattva again. Thus getting freed from the clutches of the Mahat Tattva. He has to merge in the existence of the super soul. In other words, he has to realize that qualitatively he is non-different from the super soul. And thus he transcends the material sky by his pure identical intelligence and thus becomes engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. This is the highest perfectional development of spiritual identity, which was attained by Dhritarashtra by the grace of Vidura and the Lord. The Lord's mercy was bestowed upon him by his personal contact with Vidura. And when he was actually practicing the instructions of Vidura, the Lord helped him to attain the highest perfectional stage. A pure devotee Lord does not live on any planet of the material sky, nor does he feel any contact with material elements. His so-called material body does not exist, being surcharged with the spiritual current of the Lord's identical interest. And thus, he is permanently freed from all contaminations of the sum total of the Mahatattva. He is always in the spiritual sky, which he attains by being transcendental to the sevenfold material coverings by the effect of his devotional service. The conditioned souls are within the coverings, whereas the liberated soul is far beyond the cover. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So, what we see in this purport, there's two paragraphs. The first paragraph explains the mechanical process by which, by which one can free themselves from the entanglement of the material world or the Mahatattva and begin to associate with Paramatma and identify uh, with the Paramatma as qualitatively one and give up the material uh, body, material mind, and material intelligence. And become free from the seven coverings of the material universe. Earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, and intelligence. So earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, and intelligence. Seven coverings. The false ego is false. <laughs> it doesn't exist. Uh, so it's not a covering. It is a covering, but it's, it's not a physical covering. It's, it's, it's an illusion. Okay. However, the second paragraph explains the process of Krishna consciousness, where one does not have to go through the arduous, difficult process of mechanical disentanglement from material nature. So the language Prabhupada uses in the second chapter is a special language that only devotees can understand. It's, all, it's English, but a person who's not a devotee who reads that English will not understand what he's talking about. It's very interesting. So let's read it carefully. He says, a pure devotee, this is not someone like Dhritarashtra who was not a pure devotee, right? But he became purified 
to the mechanical system. A pure devotee of the Lord does not live on any planet of the material sky, nor does he feel any contact with material elements. Now, how can you say that? Like Prabhupada was living on the earth. How can you say he's not living on any planet, on any planet of the material sky? Because wherever the pure devotee goes, he turns it into Vrindavan by the process of Krishna consciousness. So he's not actually living on this planet. His consciousness is always with Krishna. I experienced that once with Srila Prabhupada. I won't talk, talk about it now, but uh, he, he's, not, he's not living in this planet. He's, he's definitely always in Vrindavan with Krishna by his consciousness. That's why he says he does I'm not now if you were just an ordinary person you read this, you say, A pure devotee of the Lord does not live on any planet of the material sky. So you would say, Oh well, it's not part of this world. But yet he is. You see. So they would not understand this statement. Nor does he feel any contact with material elements. Well wait a minute, he has a material body. How can you say he doesn't have contact with any material elements? Ah because his body has become spiritualized by using it in Krishna consciousness. His so-called material body does not exist. Wait a minute, how can you say it does not exist? I see him walking around, talking, you know, he has shoes on and he, uh, you know, goes to the bathroom. How can you say that? Well, because the next statement says, his so-called material body does not exist being surcharged with the spiritual current of the Lord's identical interest. Now, that statement they definitely cannot understand. You should test that. Ask someone to read this paragraph and try and explain what it means. So, how can the material body no longer exist being surcharged with the spiritual current of the Lord's identical interest? That means... There's this mystical thing that's going on when a person agrees to always agree with Krishna's point of view. There's this spiritual current of the Lord's identical interest when you have exactly the same interest as the Lord. This, this mystical thing happens. Now, the Mayavadis, such as uh, Ramakrishna, do a phony imitation of this. So apparently, if you read uh, Ramakrishna's uh, biography written by Vivekananda, he explains that at one point his Gurudev touched him and then he fainted because he got this electrical charge <laughs> or some kind of some kind of energy entered into his body, you know, and he received the, the shakti of his guru, you see. <laughs> so, you know, you, can't, you, you, you have to understand one thing. These people, these Mayavadis, they're brilliant people. They're not dumb. They're very smart, but they're, they're, their smarts have been robbed by their uh, false ego. So, what Prabhupada is explaining here and what Vivekananda explained about his experience of being, you know, surcharged by his guru's shakti are two different things. Although you might think they sound alike, but actually they're two different things. And, uh, but it sounds the same because the Mayavadis, they know the philosophy. Don't think they don't know the philosophy. They know the philosophy of Krishna consciousness but they're envious of Krishna. Therefore, instead of saying that the Shakti comes from Krishna, of course it comes through the Guru from Krishna, but they're not talking about Krishna. They, they think that their Guru is Krishna. See? And, 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 what's his, and uh, Ramakrishna, he acted as if he was the Supreme Personality they got it. We won't go into it, but uh, you see, they, they obviate, they just, they just push Krishna out of the picture completely and they focus only on the guru who's supposed to be an incarnation of Krishna. See? So it says here, B 
being surcharged with the spiritual current of the Lord's identical interest. And thus he is permanently freed from all contaminations of the sum total of the Mahatattva. Now, Jitarasa goes through a very difficult process to get to that position through the mechanical system of yoga. But a devotee, in a very quick way, can attain that position if they become purely engaged in devotional service and follow strictly uh, the bona fide Vaishnava Acharya's instructions coming from Krishna originally. So although they're living in the Mahatattva, they're no longer in the Mahatattva. So Rupa Goswami explains this. He says, one becomes Jivan Mukta, a liberated soul, even in the body. Even in the body, because everything, the body, the senses, and th there's always this difference made between the body and the senses. Why is that? Because the body is the mechanics. You know, you have liver, you have the stomach, you have pancreas, all those things, the pituitary gland, and the heart, and all that stuff. But the senses are, are, are special. Although they're in the body, but their function is very special. The senses are the knowledge acquiring senses. And the other parts of the body are the working, the work performing senses. So there's a difference in, a, in, in one way of looking at it between the body and the senses. So the body, the pure devotee uses the body, the senses, including the mind and intelligence, all in the service of Krishna. That means one is agrees agrees all the time with Krishna's point of view. What's Krishna's point of view? Arjuna asked the question. He said, "Look, Krishna, uh, how can I become free from this cycle of birth and death and from the influence of the modes of material nature?" He said, "This this is bothering me. I I, I don't see." Uh, what I can, how it's possible. It's so, these, these modes are so powerful that it seems like it's impossible to overcome them. However, Krishna says, it is possible. Uh, well, Arjuna basically is saying the mind is so restless and the mind is so crazy, I don't see how I can control it. It seems to be Harder to control than a raging wind, like a hurricane. You can't control that. And the mind is even worse than that. So Krishna says, Asam sayam mahabaho, mano dur negracham chalam, abhyasena tukonteya vaira yena chagriyate. He says, Lord Krishna said, Oh, mighty armed son of Kunti, it is undoubtedly very difficult to curb the restless mind. But it is possible by suitable practice and by detachment. So, in other words, he says, abhyasena, by practice, and vairagena, by detachment. So what does that mean? So in the purport, this is 6th chapter, 35th verse, he says, the difficulty, Prabhupada says, the difficulty of controlling the obstinate mind as expressed by Arjuna is accepted by the personality of Godhead. But at the same time, he suggests that by practice and detachment, it is possible. What is that practice? In the present age, no one can observe the strict rules and regulations of placing oneself in a sacred place, focusing the mind on the super soul, restraining the senses and mind, observing celibacy, remaining alone, etc. But that's what Jitarastra has to do, you see. By the practice of Krishna consciousness, however, one engages in nine types of devotional service to the Lord. The first and foremost of such devotional engagements is hearing about Krishna. That's exactly what we're doing right now, every day. We're hearing about Krishna. As he says, this is the first and foremost of the nine processes of devotional service. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Shravanam. Uh, Vishnu Smaranam, 
Padasevanam, Archanam Vandanam, Dasyam Sakyam, Atmanim Medanam. So the first and foremost important thing is hearing about Krishna. The first and foremost of such devotional engagements is hearing about Krishna. This is a very powerful transcendental method for purging the mind of all misgivings. What's a misgiving? Oh, if I spend so much time, I have to wake up early in the morning, and I feel tired, and I chant my rounds, and come to Mangal Arati, and Mangal Arati is long also, and then I hear a class, and all these things, it's too much. I can't do my job, I can't do anything if I have to do this every day. That's not true. If you're regulated, you can. If you're not regulated, you can't. So, he says, this is a very powerful transcendental method for purging the mind of all misgivings. All these, oh, I can't do this, oh, it's too hard, oh, I'm so tired. Those are misgivings. The more one hears about Krishna, the more one becomes enlightened and detached from everything that draws the mind away from Krishna, so enlightened and detached. By detaching the mind from activities not devoted to the Lord, one can very easily learn vairagya, just like someone tells, was telling me previously some years ago, I said, oh, you know, I really like the Hindi movies. They're so entertaining. I, mean, I don't know how I can detach myself from that. <laughs> so, Everybody has something that they, they think is so impelling and so attractive that they can't detach themselves from that, right? But it's not that, you know, just the Hindi movies are so attractive. Everybody has something that's so attractive they can't detach themselves. But you have to. You have to. And the only way to do it is by this regular hearing. Vairagya means detachment from matter and engagement of the mind in spirit. That's what renunciation means. It doesn't mean you renounce everything. You renounce going to the class, you renounce going to Mangal Arati. You, you, no, that's what the Mayavadis do. They throw the baby out with the bathwater. Right? So that's not the idea. The idea is that you throw out the bathwater, but you protect the baby. So the baby is our attachment to Krishna consciousness, to following the regulative principles. And the bathwater, with all the dirt in it, is all the misgivings, why I can't do it. Why I can't do it is nonsense. Of course you can do it if you want to. Impersonal spiritual detachment is more difficult than attaching the mind to the activities of Krishna. Yeah, you try and do what Jyotarashtra did, you won't be able to do it. Or we won't be able to do it. I can't do it. But this process that Prabhupada has given us is recommended by uh, and formulated by Narada Muni and practiced by Prahlad Maharaj and so many great devotees, this is, this is possible. Impersonal spiritual detachment is more difficult than attaching the mind to the activities of Krishna. One is negative, the other is positive. It's a positive thing to attach your mind to Krishna. It's a negative thing to detach your mind from everything. This is practical because by hearing about Krishna, one becomes automatically attached to the Supreme Spirit. This attachment is called parasanubhava, spiritual satisfaction. It is just like the feeling of satisfaction a hungry man has for every morsel of food he eats. The more one eats while hungry, the more one feels satisfaction and strength. Similarly, by discharge of devotional service, one feels transcendental satisfaction as the mind becomes detached from material objectives. It is something like curing a disease by expert treatment and appropriate diet. Hearing of the transcendental activities of, the Lord, of Lord Krishna is therefore expert treatment for the mad mind and eating the food stuff offered to Krishna is the appropriate diet for the suffering patient. This treatment is the process of Krishna consciousness. So this hearing is the medicine and prasadam is the diet. Right? If you do these two things, then naturally you become detached. So 
uh, it says vairagya means detachment from matter and engagement of the mind and spirit. So that's what we're doing when we're hearing. We're engaging the mind in spiritual things. So then Prabhupada says, he is always in the spiritual sky, which he attains by being transcendental to the sevenfold material coverings by the effect of his devotional service. Now, nobody's going to say, what are the seven material coverings? What is he talking about? Right? They can't understand this. Very difficult. You, if, you, if you don't believe me, you try it. Have someone read this. It's not Krishna consciousness. I don't understand one word. I mean, I understand the words, but I don't understand what he's trying to say. The conditioned souls are within the coverings, whereas the liberated soul is far beyond the cover. Srila Prabhupada, Patita Bhavana Ki Jai, Gaur Primanandi, Haribo, Haribo, Haribo. Are there any questions? One has to refer to the original position by amalgam, uh, amalgamating the, the five gross elements, and the subtle elements, mind and intelligence, into the Mahatma again. It means you collect all these things and throw them away, put them back to the Mahatma. But because the, uh, let's see where that's set. Yeah, he has to revert to the original position by amalgamating. Amalgamating means you put them together. The five gross elements, earth, water, fire, air, ether. And the subtle elements, mind and intelligence. Into the Mahatattva again. So it's like this. Let's say you have a library of mundane books. So what do you do? You amalgamate them. Put them all in a box. And you take them to, uh, you know half price books company and say, you know, how much you give me for this? They'll say, we'll give you two dollars. What? I paid like, you know, five thousand dollars, but they're not worth anything, you know. We'll give you two bucks. Okay, give me two bucks. No, but actually you say, look, it's an insult you're offering me two bucks. You take it for free. I don't want it, any money. Say, so, you know, you're 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 not attached to it anymore. Whereas before there was your pride. You say it's like one devotee he always tells a story, he said, when I was not Krishna conscious, my pride was my wine cellar in my house. And everyone would come to visit my house, I'd take them down and show them my wine cellar and explain, you know, this is a Chardonnay from the, uh, this is the most, this is, this is worth $10,000, this one bottle, you know, it's from 1896, you know, and this is my, this was my pride, you know. But after I heard Bhagavad Gita and, and listened to the preaching of the devotees, you know, I threw the whole thing away. <laughs> and now my pride is, I show everyone the Srimad Bhagavatam in my house. I said, that's my pride. You know? So you see, you amalgamate all those things, put them in like a box, and you just throw them away. You, you throw them back into the Mahatattva. That's what it means. You're not attached anymore. The earth, water, fire, air, easy meaning the body, right? nor the mind and intelligence. Most people see this sense gratification starts with the body and then it transfers over to the mind and intelligence. And they, you know, through remembering their sense gratification when they were 20 years old or 25 years old or 40 years old. And uh, remembering it and then enjoying it, right, in the mind and the, and using the intelligence to uh, analyze it. Just like, you know, you, analyze, you, you, you find something, you look at it, you enjoy it a little bit, and then you analyze it, right? So that's, and to, to, to imp improve your enjoyment of the thing. So you throw all that away. You give it back to the Mahatattva. And all these things become purified by using them in Krishna's service. So by amalgamating the five gross elements and the subtle elements, 
mind and intelligence, into the Mahatattva again, thus getting freed from the clutches of the Mahatattva. He has to merge in the existence of the super soul. In other words, he has to realize that qualitatively he's non different from the super soul, and thus he transcends the material sky by his pure identical intelligence and thus becomes engaged in a transcendental loving service. Well, you can get engaged in a transcendental loving service right away. You don't have to go through that whole process. That's why Prabhupada says in Bhagavad Gita, it's a very famous quote I often quote a lot. From Prabhupada at the end of the eighth chapter, I think. The beauty of Krishna consciousness, however, is that by one stroke, by engaging in devotional service, one can surpass all the rituals of the different orders of life. Here it is, 8th chapter, 28th verse in the purport. One stroke. So that one stroke is you throw all that stuff back to the Mahatattva. I don't want it anymore. And you do that by regular hearing and chanting and engaging in devotional service without any material motive. Haribo. I, yeah, I, I become more and more aware of that really the whole process is hearing chanting. That's that's what it is. And the, the, my my favorite my favorite prayer, you know, to achieve this the second the second verse of six just that I'm very important. Yes. That that's my favorite prayer. Yes. The second verse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. There's no better prayer than that one. Well, they're all good, but uh, they're all transcendental. But uh, that one, is, that one is your preference. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Because, because see, if it, the first verse of Sikh Shastakam glorified, the glo the, 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 it's a glorification of the holy name of the Lord, mm. uh, the, the the potency. Yes. The holy name. But then the real, then the second verse is the prayer. How to, to get there? Because all other verses, like the third verse, the Nadapi, all that, if you don't develop the attachment to holy names, mm -hmm. useless. If you if you, you don't become attached to the holy name, attract attracted to holy name, mm -hmm. nothing will work. Yeah. Your holy name alone can render all benediction to living beings. And and they're praying that I'm I'm so unfortunate. So basically we're praying to develop, you know, if we can develop that attraction of yeah. hearing changing. I find it very powerful statement. I remember when I first joined Krishna consciousness, you know, they told me to chant Hare Krishna. I started chanting and all of a sudden I felt this tremendous uh, happiness chanting and I didn't want to stop <laughs> you know, it was a real experience I never thought that you could feel I mean I was a musician so I, I and I would sing songs you know love songs and things like that and it would give me it would give me some happiness right but the happiness I felt by chanting Hare Krishna was much greater I actually felt it so yeah you know, so I gave up singing those other songs <laughs> That experience quite very general of so many devotees. Yeah. At the first, Krishna gives you like amazing, tremendous yes. blessings. You think, even to the point you think, oh, I'm beautiful. <laughs> so uh, I don't, I yeah. <laughs> no, but the, those are all parts of the pure, uh, you know, steps of purification. Mm -hmm. And, and of course, you know, when will my eyes be decorated with tears of love flowing constantly when I chant your holy name? So that initial crying is, you know, it's, it's purifying, very purifying, because you realize how fallen, we realize how fallen we are, and, and, and we begin to understand the mercy of Prabhupada and his devotees. So that brings tears to the eyes, because without them, we would never be introduced to this. Yeah. And then, uh, then gradually again, when we start, we, when we take to the process, then some offenses are there, several pride, and then you lose those bow, that bow. But again, well, the, the the real crying is when you cry out of ecstasy of love for Krishna. Mm -hmm. 
One thing is crying because you realize you're very fallen and you've received mercy of these very powerful personalities. The other thing is crying out of ecstasy for love for Krishna. When will my eyes be, where it says, when will my eyes be decorated with tears of love flowing constantly when I chant your holy name? When will my voice choke up and when will the hairs of my body stand on end at the recitation of your holy name? So that's another state. That's the ultimate goal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and maybe that goal is, is that's a, this is as a subject a symptoms. It, it, it comes to a level of, like you say yesterday, that you love a different, in, in English you say just love. But in Sanskrit, love is different stages. Yeah, and there are different, different qualities of it. Different qualities. Yeah. But this is supposed to be in the, um, in the quality of the, uh, the high level of the gopis. Yeah. And it's possible to uh, attain that by Krishna consciousness. Yeah, yeah. It's called uh, Bhava, Adiru Bhava. Modana, Modana, Modana. It's like a stage of love, Modana, Modana, Modana. That's way above my level. <laughs> 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 but uh, it's here, you know, feeling, feeling of separation, I'm considering a moment to be like 12 years or more. Tears are flowing from my soul. Right. Two times you're talking about, in verse 6 and verse 7, about tears flowing from the eyes. Yeah. Like torrents of rain, I'm feeling all vacant in the world in your absence. So, so then first we have to come with where to develop, like where to be attracted to a holy man, and then those things will take place later. Well, let's keep trying. We'll keep trying every day to be attracted more and more. Yeah, that, that pr yes, we said that prayer, the second verse, is very, very important. Haribo. Thank, thank you for sharing your realization. All glories to Srila Prabhupada ki jai. It comes from the nectar. I don't have any nectar. I'm just reading what Prabhupada says. The the nec that's you the read, nectar. Yeah. Are you really it doesn't belong to me. I'm just, it's, I'm just sharing it. Yeah. Haribo. Haribo. All glories to Srila Prabhupada ki jai.